This is NHK World Japan. We bring you the news from Radio Japan on Friday, November 1st. I'm Emma Howard. And I'm Marcus Pittman. In our top stories, the International Olympic Committee formally announces next year's marathon and racewalk events will be moved from Tokyo to the northern city of Sapporo. State media in North Korea on Friday said the country successfully tested a super large rocket launcher the day before. And Taiwan's railway authority has sued a major Japanese trading company over a deadly train derailment last year. Now the news in detail. Next year's Olympic marathon and racewalk events are being moved from Tokyo to the northern city of Sapporo. The move is aimed at avoiding the extreme summer heat. Representatives of four bodies involved in organizing the 2020 Tokyo Olympics met on Friday to discuss the issue. Tokyo Governor Yuriko Koike said, I remain unchanged in the belief that the marathon and competitive walking events should take place in Tokyo. But as the host city, Tokyo must consider the importance of creating a framework for the Games to succeed. So, although I do not agree with the IOC decision, I will not interfere with the choice made by the authority vested with the right to deliver the final word. Details and logistics of the new route remain unclear, but the International Olympic Committee is expected to hold a news conference soon. Police in Japan's southern prefecture of Okinawa have told NHK that the entrance to the main hall at Shurijo Castle was found closed shortly after the fire started. The blaze is believed to have started in the main hall early Thursday morning. It was put out 11 hours later, by which time most of the castle's major buildings had been destroyed. Police say a sensor installed on the north side of the main hall detected an issue and sent out an alert. A security guard hurried over to the site and found the entrance to be closed. They say the guard unlocked the shutter, entered the hall and found it was already filled with smoke. Workers had been preparing for an event in the central court in front of the main hall until about one hour before the fire started. Police are looking into whether the workers were properly using electricity. They began an, an on-site investigation on Friday to determine what caused the fire. Shurijo Castle was built some 500 years ago, but was destroyed in the Battle of Okinawa toward the end of World War II. The main hall and other buildings were later reconstructed. The ruins of the original castle have UNESCO World Heritage status. The restored buildings do not. The central government is considering adding funds to a supplementary budget for the current fiscal year to support restoration work. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga says the government will do all it can to reconstruct the buildings, calling Shurijo Castle an extremely important symbol of Okinawa. Some lawmakers are also pushing for measures to support Okinawa, saying the number of tourists to the prefecture may decline. UNESCO says it's ready to support the reconstruction of Shurijo Castle. In an interview with NHK in Paris shortly after the disaster, the UNESCO World Heritage Center director, Mettilt Rosler, expressed shock at seeing another fire at a World Heritage Site. Rosler said Shurijo Castle is a symbol for Japan and for the people of Okinawa, and expressed her sympathy for the loss. The director said she is ready to send a team of experts if the Japanese government makes a request. She referred to the ongoing reconstruction of a Ugandan site after a fire in 2010 as an example of work being carried out. Rosler said she has contacted Japanese authorities and expects UNESCO officials to meet with them next week. The UN agency official also said the fire would not affect the site's World Heritage listing as the castle is only one of nine historical component parts at the location. State media in North Korea on Friday said the country successfully tested a super large rocket launcher the day before. The report did not say whether leader Kim Jong-un oversaw the test. South Korea's military on Thursday said the North fired two projectiles from South Pyongyang province the same day. Japan's government said they were short-range ballistic missiles and flew between 350 and 400 kilometers. 
Tokyo said the missiles fell into the Sea of Japan outside of the country's exclusive economic zone. Japan's Internal Affairs Ministry says the country's unemployment rate for September stood at 2.4 percent. The figure, released by the ministry on Friday, marked a drop of 0.2 percentage points compared to August. You're listening to Radio Japan of the NHK World Japan Network. Mitsubishi Aircraft has lost a major contract to provide planes to a U.S. airline operator. The company is developing the first Japanese-made passenger jet. It had a contract to sell 100 Mitsubishi space jets to U.S.-based Trans States Holdings. But the American firm cancelled the deal because the plane's 90 seats exceed the limit for local routes. Mitsubishi says it hopes to sell a 70-seat version of the aircraft to Trans States. That model complies with regulations for local routes. Mitsubishi had received orders for more than 400 units of the 90-seat version of the space jet. Taiwan's railway authority has sued a major Japanese trading company over a deadly train derailment last year. The Taiwan Railways Administration, or TRA, filed a lawsuit at the Taipei District Court on Thursday. It is demanding Sumitomo Corporation pay 611 million new Taiwan dollars, or roughly 20 million US dollars, in damages. Sumitomo supplied Taiwan with the express train that derailed in the island's northeastern county of Yilan in October last year, leaving 18 passengers dead. The train was manufactured by Japanese firm Nippon Sharyo. The TRA says the train was not equipped with a monitoring function that automatically notifies the operation command center when a train safety system is switched off. The authority says this was the result of a design flaw. Taiwanese prosecutors say the train driver turned off the safety system after struggling with a brake problem. They say the train later in entered a curve at nearly twice the speed limit, leading to the derailment. The prosecutors have indicted the driver and two other TRA officials on charges of negligence resulting in death. The TRA says the lawsuit is based on the findings of an investigation into what caused the derailment. The authority says it will also seek compensation for the families of those killed in the accident. Chile's president, Sebastián Piñera, says Spain has offered to host a UN climate change conference in its capital, Madrid, on the original scheduled dates following Chile's withdrawal as host. Piñera told reporters on Thursday that Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez had made the offer when they talked on the phone. The president added that he had recommended Spain as the new host to the United Nations. Pineda on Wednesday cancelled plans to host the UN climate gathering COP25 scheduled for December 2nd to 13th, as well as a summit meeting of Asia-Pacific leaders in November. Both events were to be held in the capital, Santiago. The cancellations were due to widespread violent protests in the country that were triggered by a subway fare hike. Pinera made no mention of the APEC summit. It appears that finding an alternative venue for the gathering remains difficult. UN Climate Change Executive Secretary Patricia Espinosa welcomed Spain's offer. Espinosa said in a statement that it is encouraging to see countries working together in the spirit of multilateralism to address climate change, the biggest challenge facing current and future generations. UN officials are expected to consider Spain's proposal next week and make a formal decision. US President Donald Trump says he will sign an initial trade deal with China at an alternative location after the APEC summit in Chile was cancelled. Trump tweeted on Thursday, China and the USA are working on selecting a new site for signing of Phase 1 of Trade Agreement. He added, the new location will be announced soon. The U.S. and China have been holding talks as trade friction persists between the world's two biggest economies. They've reached an agreement on some issues, including China's commitment to import more farm products from the U.S. Trump planned to sign the deal with Chinese President Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the APEC meeting in mid-November. 
Trump has been eager to get an agreement. His administration has indicated it will drop a plan to impose additional tariffs on smartphones from China in mid-December if the deal goes through. But some U.S. media say that the two governments remain apart on the specifics of the document. China's Communist Party leaders say they will ensure the stability of Hong Kong and the country's national security. The comment was part of a communique issued on Thursday after a four-day meeting of more than 300 senior party officials in Beijing. President Xi Jinping and other government leaders attended and discussed how to strengthen the country's one-party rule. The communique said the party will uphold the one country, two systems framework in Hong Kong and safeguard the territory's long-term prosperity and stability. Observers say the party is believed to have agreed on the need to strengthen control amid months of protests in Hong Kong. The communique also apparently refers to the U.S.-China trade route and the slowing domestic economy. It says the situation is becoming more complicated, with risks and challenges increasing at home and abroad. The communique also calls for unity under President Xi, saying the party will advance the modernization of China's system and capacity for governance. The Islamic State militant group has released a statement announcing a new leader and confirming the death of its former head Abu Bakr al Baghdadi. The group said on Thursday that Baghdadi was killed in a weekend raid by U.S. forces in northwestern Syria. The group identified its new leader as Abu Ibrahim Al Hashemi Al Quraishi and vowed revenge against the U.S. As security experts warned retaliation was likely, Turkish security forces said they detained 43 people with suspected links to the militants. Among them were five suspects allegedly plotting a revenge attack. The Trump administration has been criticized for adding to security concerns in the region by withdrawing U.S. troops from northern Syria. The organizer of the 2020 Tokyo Games and the International Paralympic Committee has agreed to hold the Paralympic Marathon as planned in Tokyo. The Games' organizing committee, committee president Yoshiro Mori and IPC president Andrew Parsons met in Tokyo on Thursday to discuss the Paralympic marathon. The two agreed to hold the event in Tokyo in September as scheduled. They pointed out the differences in temperature and other conditions in September compared to August, which is the month the Olympic marathons and race walks were initially planned. They also noted that the race will start at 6:30 a.m. earlier than usual. Finally, let's take another look at the top stories at this hour. The International Olympic Committee formally announces next year's marathon and race walk events will be moved from Tokyo to the northern city of Sapporo. State media in North Korea on Friday said the country successfully tested a super large rocket launcher the day before, and Taiwan's railway authority has sued a major Japanese trading company over a deadly train derailment last year. And that was the news from Radio Japan of the NHK World Japan Network. I'm Emma Howard, and I'm Marcus Pittman.